everybody, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Everything Kratom, the podcast about anything and everything Kratom. Great to have you with us on this Monday morning as always. Hope you are all doing well today. Welcome to the start of the new week. And to start the week off, I thought that I would make a prediction or two. I guess I'll be going out on a limb here, but what the heck, it's Monday, we need some excitement. So here we go. Without getting into any of the specifics around climate change or even getting into the arguments around climate change, I think it's safe to say, and everyone will probably acknowledge that places change in terms of the way their climate is over time. We're good, we're good. All right, (laughs) now that we're on the same friendly terms, Basically, what I've realized or thought about recently is that Kratom requires specific conditions that are only in certain places, and a lot of people always talk about how difficult it is to grow it. And hence, you know, where it's from, Southeast Asia continues to be the best area for it. So, um, you know, I'm not an expert in how you grow Kratom, but from what I can tell and what I've looked up, it likes warm and humid areas, it likes the temperatures to be in the high 80s, you know, give or take 10 degrees, and, um... And, and it also, like, needs really good, rich soil, you know? So, basically, you're looking for places like where it's grown currently. However, what I was thinking about recently is that climate change, from what we can tell, and this part, you know, really, I'm not trying to get into debate around climate change if anybody finds it, you know, like, controversial. I don't, but, you know, I'll just, I will we'll leave it there for anyone else. Um, regardless, there are places that are becoming warmer and humid, or more humid and and more dry and and more cold like there are places that and then there are places that are doing both like actually in the northeast like vermont and and in the the kind of like upstate new york area it's like sometimes it's like really warm and humid in the summer and then um, like three days later it's like drops 30 degrees and it's like then it stops raining and then it's like warm again but it doesn't rain and then it's like a drought it's like how can you have too much water and too little water in the same month (laughs) i don't even know anyway all this is saying it's tough to predict but some places on earth generally are moving towards certain conditions some places are becoming more dry more warm or more dry and more cold and other places are becoming more humid and more warm and I guess humid and cold, although I actually haven't really heard much about that one. But I guess that's that's got to be true somewhere. I'll look into that. Not making any claim on that. But I know about the other ones. <laughs> anyway, so I looked into it and I was like, wait a second. If Kratom requires certain conditions that only exist in certain places, but those conditions are changing in other places, does that mean that the Kratom market is poised for a shift or like a change? Will it move or will it like also grow to other areas? Um... And are those other areas kind of like primed for having a Kratom market in terms of growing it and selling it or or importing it? But I mean, like, really, I'm talking about growing it. And so I looked into it a little. And from what I could tell, our basic understanding is that regardless of reasoning why, it seems like the following areas are going to become more warm and humid over the next couple decades. Sub-Saharan Africa. South and Southeast Asia, Central and South America, Mexico, Southern parts of the United States, and the Mediterranean and Middle East regions. They'll all experience more warm and more humid uh, conditions and temperatures. And those temperatures should probably range roughly in the range of what Kratom likes, Um, although some of those places will get too hot, but um, some of them will become a good temperature. So... Basically, I'm like, huh, I wonder, I decided to look into those areas where that shift is happening to see if the soil is like pretty good or rich in content. And the thing that I found after looking into that and also some other things basically comes down to this. I think my prediction on how Kratom is going to be affected by climate change is that it's going to be benefited by it. And I think the markets are going to shift. I think that they'll probably expand in Southeast Asia, although they might need to adjust a bit or move around a little bit depending on policy and also how hot it gets. And then, in, and also, you know, if there's like way too much rain and things get flooded out. And then I think that the big question mark, but I'm gonna make a, a very, go out on a big limb and make a big prediction here. I have a feeling that in the next 20 to 30 years, maybe even 10 years, we're gonna see Kratom markets shift and Kratom growers 
uh, start to pop up everywhere in South America, a little bit in Central America, and the Southern US. And I think that in like the Southern or maybe Southeastern US, um, it's gonna like explode too. I think that the Kratom markets are going to balloon in certain countries in Southeast Asia, a few different places in uh, South America, perhaps Central America, and I think definitely the southeastern U.S. There is my prediction. And it's really like, I'm, I'm not an expert on policy, I'm not an expert on science or climate change or any of this. All I'm looking at is just this idea that, huh, wow, it likes these conditions. These places are going to become those conditions in the next 10 to 30 years. Maybe Kratom will be grown there, right? And I'm only thinking that for the places I just mentioned because, well, there's already an interest in the U.S. and the Kratom market's growing there. It makes sense that we would want to grow it here, and there's not many growers here. Um, but the conditions are going to get better for Kratom growing here. Then, when you look at South America, it seems like a great opportunity or place, naturally, in my opinion, because there's some good soils there. Um, the temperatures are going to become even more humid and warm, which will favor Kratom. Lots of sun, but also plenty of shade if you need it, depending on where you're growing it. And then on top of all that, um, I feel like there's this natural, like... Uh, I, I guess it would be like a natural fit for a Kratom market to be so close to the U.S. since we do import so much and our import is growing. That it would make sense that it wouldn't have to like travel by boat or go across like literally around the world to get to us if it's like, you know, already in our hemisphere. Maybe that would be a natural fit. But um, but I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if that's actually how it would work out. I don't know if this is actually how it's going to play out or if those conditions are truly going to, to take place in the way that I think it will. But from what I can tell, those are the areas where it's going to become more favorable. And, um, you know, Kratom seems to be on the move. Like, it, it's starting to expand in the countries where it already is and gain more focus. So who knows? Who knows what's on the horizon? But anyway, I'm just looking at it with the limited scope here of my amateur research mind. So there you have it. All right, everybody, let's see what happens with the global economy in the next 30 years, and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Talk to you all then and take care. Bye bye.